lab four. In this lab exercise, we're going to take a look at some of the functionality that we've learned over the past several weeks all the way into completing this lab. As you can see, there's several different types of pat There's patterns, there's a draft, there's a chamfers and fillets all over the place. And so we're going to do quite a, quite a few different things here. So let's begin. Start with the new part file. Call, call it or name it L1, capital L1. It, uh, actually, this should be, uh, I'm sorry, capital L4, L1, capital L4. Okay, and we can begin by clicking on extrude and selecting the front plane. I'm going to turn my planes on here. And we'll proceed first by drawing a little line, uh, actually a center line in the middle, vertical center line. And you can zoom up to that and just draw the line tool. Now be careful here when you're drawing the line, don't let it lock into this edge right here, this uh, horizontal line. So go a little bit below it and just drag out a short little horizontal line like that. Uh, not horizontal, I'm sorry, angled line. Have it cross through. And then middle click a couple times. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the geometry we want to mirror, which is that line. Go to the mirror tool and then select the center line, the vertical center line. Now if you didn't put the vertical center line in advance, you won't have anything to mirror across. So just remember we use the center line tool to do that. All right, once we have these two together like that, don't worry about the dimensions so much as let's go to the arc tool and find three point tangent n. With that, click on the bottom vertex, lower left corner, or it could be the right. Click and try and follow that same collinear path of that line that you're drawn off of. And then you'll see it come out with a T, and that means you're getting tangent relationship automatically. And I'm continuing to move and just connect it to the other end just like that. The middle click. And actually, I should have drawn two lines of mirror and lacrosse. I forgot about that. Click on the line tool again, and up in the upper left vertex, click and drag an uh, angled line at a stronger angle than the last one, just like that. Middle click. And now let's uh, click on that line, go to mirror, and select the vertical center line again. All right, now that we're there, let's go ahead and change this to 0.75. If you don't see the dimension, go ahead and just locate it and put it in yourself. Next, let's go and we're going to add some additional dimensions. So go to the normal tool, click on this angled line, the very first one, and the one on the right, and then in between the two, middle click to drop the dimension, and that's going to be 23 degrees. All right, we're going to go ahead and also add another dimension here um, between these two angled lines. So make sure it's still on. Click on these two. And this is supposed to be 115. Okay, another dimension that we should put in will be between the center point at the base here. Click on that to this ink, this uh, vertex here, and then middle click over here. And that's going to be one inch. All right, it starts to look like it's doing some funny thing things here, but that's okay. Go ahead and you could uh, middle click a couple times to get out of the dimension tool. And you could just drag these ones in a little bit. And we're going to probably have to update the angle again. That's all right. Just bring them down, so 115 degrees. Maybe lay these out a little bit easier to see so it's not so cluttered on your screen. Okay. Also, um, we're going to lock this into zero here. So double click on that, and zero. So that's locked in coincident. All right. Now we could go to the arc tool again. Now for this one, we don't want, we want the three point. Arc. We don't want the actual tangent arc, so we don't want to follow collinear to that line. Instead, go out this way to the right. If you start getting the wrong one, 
there. You just kind of have to wipe it up and down a couple times. And then it should just give you this little X with a little minus symbol to the left of it. Click on this corner here, drag this up a bit, click to drop it. Now middle click a couple times, and now we could add the 1.5. Okay. In this case, it's a little bit stretched beyond its mean, so if we drag it out manually, we get it closer. Okay, and it's not cooperating with us right now, but that's okay. We're going to get some of the addition, some of the other dimensions in first. Okay, so we're going to dimension between this center point here and the center point at the base. Middle click, and that just needs to be pulled out to um, 1.25. Let's try and change this now, 1.5. There we go. So once you add some of the other dimensions, it will enable you to go ahead and change it. So just lay the dimensions out accordingly. It's a bit of a tricky sketch for a novice user. So if you get a little frustrated, don't threat. It, it'll be okay. Just keep working on it, and you'll be able to do it. All right, at this point, we're ready to extrude. So I'm going to hit OK, and this needs to be extruded. A little print here. The thickness is going to be a half inch, 0 0.5. So I'm going to 0.5. Okay, also, there's supposed to be draft on here. You can see the typical draft is 25 degrees while we extrude that. So let's go back to the model and go up here to options and add taper. And it's going to be minus 25. If it goes in the reverse direction where it's like mushrooming out, change that to minus, hit type of minus 25 again to see if it updates properly. And you could hit the green check mark to apply. All right. Just so you can see this a little bit easier, I'm going to turn off some of those planes. At this point, now we have a 30 degree angle that we have to put in for a chamfer. So let's use the chamfer tool here. And instead of distance to distance, we're going to go angle to distance. And it's going to be 30 degrees for the angle. And then we have to look on the print here. And it's 0 0.181 for the depth. So over here, 0 0.181. And now just click on this edge. And you should see the preview. Now there is a flip if it doesn't look quite right. You can flip it and reverse it. And actually, that's uh, the angle it's supposed to be at. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now go to the rounds tool and half inch, type in 0.5, and select this edge here and apply. Now we could shell it. So flip it around to the back side. Go to the shell command, and the shell needs to be 0.06 and select the back face for it to open up. Hit the green check mark. Now at this point, we're going to put in these little holes in here, these pockets. So we can start with the extrude. Select this face right here in front. Make sure you go normal too. Remember, you could always go to A, B, and go to front as well. If it doesn't, if yours isn't automatically set to go in that orientation. First, start off with the center line and draw a new center line in the center. Like that. Go to the line tool, and we're going to copy our same method we used before, where we just draw a short little angled line, middle click, and then go to mirror and select the center line while well, that's still selected. Otherwise, you could click on this line, go to mirror, and then select the center line. Now we'll use the tangent arc tool again. Zoom up to it so you can see a little better. Click and follow collinear to that line that it's coming off of so it knows to snap the tangent and wrap it around. Try the same at the top, up, and wrap it around. Don't go straight across, otherwise it won't come out right. Then it'll click a couple times. It's supposed to be 0 0.2 by 0.1. And distance between the two, let's just verify on the print, is 0.5. So let's go to the dimension tool, select both centers, middle click, 0.5. All right, now this also needs to be dimensioned according to the print 
on there's like a bolt circle here and that's a radius of 0.7 so what we're going to do is that we're just going to dimension to the center here we're going to have to do a little bit of work though we're going to go to references select the outer edge and the middle click that way we locate a center now and from here we could go to the dimension tool select the bottom center point to this center point here we could get to it or select the outer edge that's fine too that middle click between the two and that's 0.7 all right at this point we're now ready to go ahead and extrude that so we hit OK flip it by clicking on the little pink arrow there and then select the remove material button um, also go through all just for consistency and hit the green check mark now while that's still selected um, well actually it doesn't we're not going to pattern it just yet uh, we actually need to see our axis display for this next one and right now you can see there's no axis to select for the, to be patterned around at 24 degrees each. So we're going to draw in, we're going to go to extrude and draw in on this surface here, a concentric circle, a little circle, select the outer edge, draw it in, and then that's going to be, according to the print, 0.835 in diameter. Now we'll hit OK, and that gets extruded 0.03. Just double click on this dimension, extrude that out. Now you'll see there's actually a little um, axis there. So at this point, we could select the surface of the extrude or select it from the feature tree. And if we go to pattern, what we'll find here is we have a little bit of an issue. We need to find that axis again to spin it around, but it disappears. That's because we put in that feature of that boss of 30,000 boss after the fact. So let's cancel that. We need to get extrude 3 to occur before or after extrude. I should say extrude 3 needs to occur before extrude 2 because this is history based. So it's a simple solution. Grab extrude 2, the left mouse button, hold it down and drag it just underneath extrude 3 and it will reorder. And so at this point now, we could go to and select the surface. Go to Pattern, select Axis, select that little axis in the center, and now we're going to put in 24, and also we only need 3 on this side. And hit the green check mark to apply. Now we're going to mirror that across, so let's bring up our planes, and we're going to select that Pattern 1 in the Feature Tree. We're going to go to Mirror. And now select this plane, the right plane, right in the center. Hit the, uh, the green check mark. Should mirror those over. Okay, now that we have that pattern, we're going to go ahead and go to the extrude button and select this face right here. Use the reference tool and select this edge and we have a uh, section we could actually lock into a uh, using the center rectangle right in the middle drag out a little block there and I'll click and the width needs to be 0.1 and it's 0.5 actually it's a 0.1 high by 0.05 Okay, now we can hit OK, flip the direction so it goes down and remove material so it's a cut, and we can select through all. Hit the green check mark. Now go to the round tool and set it to point 0.1. Select this edge right here. Apply. Go ahead and put a round around the entire. Um, actually, no, we'll wait to put the round on. Um, at this point, I don't think we can do it. Let's see. Go to the round and 0.03. And select this edge here. Hit the green check mark. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pattern 
these two. Now to put them together, we just hold control, select the extrude four, and hold control, select the round two, and then right click and group. This will allow us to go to pattern and find axis, select our center axis, and there needs to be 15 entities, and we're going to do 360 divided by 15 to give us our 24 degrees. Hit the green check mark to apply. There are features. Now we'll go to extrude and select this face, in which we could start our sketch for the diameter. We could go to circular pattern. Or just I'm sorry, uh, concentric circle. Drag in a circle off that edge. Double click, and that's going to need to be diameter here. Uh, there's it's not specified because it's a, a logo. So we can really put anything we want in this one. So just double click, make it 0.5. That's a little bit.